Welcome back to the Cave of Wonders, Dreamwalkers. I am your Sith Lord Callus. I am where Star Wars lives. And this is another Rancor's review, the Mandalorian edition. So if you're new here to the channel, I need you to subscribe, hit that like button, and then turn on notifications so you can join the Dreamwalkers on our journey. Today we'll be talking about episode two of the Mandalorian, entitled The Child. So let's get into the story. We begin with the Mandalorian and the Youngling, or the child affectionately referred to as Baby Yoda, on Arvala 7, making their way back to the Mando ship when they are ambushed by a trio of Klaatuinians. These are the same three that we saw in Episode 1 in the Bounty Hunters Guild scene. They seem to take a real interest in the Mandalorian's conversation with Grief Karga. He deals with them dutifully though, and when it's all said and done, he finds that one of the attackers is actually carrying a tracking forb. This is most interesting because both Grief and the Imperial representative implied that the Mandalorian would be the only hunter on this assignment. We learned that this wasn't the case last episode when they introduced IG-11, but now we have three new hunters on the same target. And what's worse, the Mandalorian has now killed four members of the Bounty Hunters Guild. So we'll have to see how those consequences unfold later in the story. Next, we see that our hero was injured in the skirmish and he's using a repair tool to try to cauterize the wound. It's dark and the pair have set up camp for the night. But the youngling seems to take quite an interest in the Mandalorian's injury. He even climbs down from his levitating bassinet to try to inspect the wound up close. I thought these actions were very telling, and it will be interesting to see if my suspicions come to fruition. In the morning, the pair continue their trek back to the ship, only to find it being completely dismantled by a group of off-world Jawas. Now this scene is a payoff for me because months ago I noticed that they were selling Black Series figures called off-world Jawas. I assume they were going to be in the Rise of Skywalker, so it's kind of cool to see that they were intended for this show instead. But moving on, our hero tries to stop the Jawas from stripping his ship by taking a few shots of disintegrating bolts <laughs> at a few of them. But ultimately the Jawas escape in their impenetrable fortress on treads, I think it's called a sand crawler and the Mandalorian is forced to give chase. My biggest issue with this scene was its inconsistency because the Mandalorian caused two of the Jawas to fall from the very top of the vehicle and plummet to their deaths, but when he himself falls from the same distance directly on his back, he is barely even dazed. I just didn't appreciate that inconsistency. It did raise a few questions for me though and the most pressing had me wondering if the youngling was at, a, at all uh, involved with his survival, either the fall or his quick recovery. They seemed to cut to the child a few times before the Mandalorian sat up. So that made me wonder, I guess I'll have to wait and see if anything connects. Now with his ship in complete disrepair, the Mandalorian and the child head back to Nuil for help. He agrees and offers to help our hero trade with the Jawas in return for his ship parts. Baby Yoda eats a frog, which for me was one part Jabba the Hutt and one part Jar Jar Binks, and then they are on their way to the Jawa trade post. Now, unwilling to part with his best car armor, the Jawas make only one other suggestion for trade. Our Mandalorian is to bring them an egg, the egg. The Mandalorian agrees and heads out in search of this prize with the child in tow. To me, and if you're a gamer you may appreciate this sentiment, but this scene reminded me of having a pet floating next to you in an MMORPG like SWOTOR. But anyway, the Mando finds the lair of the beast whose egg he's trying to retrieve and he goes inside. 
Now, I'm not yet sure what species this beast is, but it gives the Mandalorian a good butt whipping until the youngling uses the force to suspend the charging bull, saving the Mandalorian's life. He is then able to get in a fatal blow to the beast's neck. I like this scene, although it was certainly predictable for me. And after the child expends himself, he passes out in the bassinet from exhaustion. The Mandalorian retrieves the egg from the lair and he delivers it to the Jawas impatiently waiting in their crawler. Oddly enough, the request for this egg was nothing more than it being a delicacy for the Jawas and for no other significance. I thought that was pretty cool, though it would have pissed me off if I was the Mandalorian. Nuil and the Mando head back to his ship with all of his ship parts and they get to work repairing the Razor Crest. After a few days, it's complete. The Mandalorian asks Nuil to join his ship crew, but Nuil declines having found peace on Arvala 7 and wishing to live out the rest of his days undisturbed. Mando understands and with the child still in his slumber, he fires up the engines and takes to the stars. And this is where the episode ends. Overall, I thought this was another solid episode. It was a bit shorter than the first, but it still felt complete nonetheless. The music was engaging and felt appropriate for the scenes. I appreciate the focus on the hero's journey in this episode and the focus on the one consistent environment. I like that our hero is flawed and vulnerable, like that, and shows a great deal of compassion for the youngling even though it would appear that he is still going to turn him in as a bounty. But one question still burns in my mind. Was or is there some degree of betrayal going on here? As we see more than one member of the guild was given this child as a target. I fully expected for this child to be force sensitive, but is that the attraction here or is it something more? I guess we'll have to wait and see and I can't wait for episode three. I hope you'll all join me here for another Rancorous review. Look, I do what I love. I hope you love what I do. This has been a Rancorous review. Until next time.